In this video, I'm going over installing antivirus in your Linux system. And I'm really showing you this just in case you really want to do this. However, I don't still think there's much of a problem, but it depends on the user. Some users may engage in high risk activities. And I wanted to show an article about some Linux systems getting infected because of those systems being compromised. So I wanted to show both methods of this just in case you did do something silly like running an unauthorized script from some unknown site or downloading a program and installing it on your Linux based system that you really shouldn't have been downloading and installing. Uh, both these things can install a virus on your system. However, most Linux users install from authorized repositories. They build typically from source from GitHub, which is typically vetted by users. So most Linux users still don't need an antivirus, but I at least wanted to show this just in case you fall in the other camp. So here is the article that shows that Linux systems are found to have some malware on it. So the malware uh, in question is Hidden Wasp is what they're calling it. It's just a morph of Wintini, which you know is a different strand. It's anticipated that Chinese state hackers planted these viruses. But the big part of this is, you know, one, it's comprised of a rootkit, a trojan, and then a deployment script. So it's a kind of a multifunction virus at this point. But reading through this article, one thing has popped out that no one knows what the attack vector is. And it looks as if all the infected machines were already compromised by the hackers, which means they already had remote access. They just decided to load these tools or malware on the system once they had access. So really the big takeaway is here, one, secure Linux based servers properly the first time and you don't have to worry about it. And then two, we can also run antivirus. So I know in the past I said, hey, you don't need to install antivirus on Linux, but as time goes on, I mean, Linux is not nearly as susceptible as Windows. I'm not even gonna go there. Um, it's fundamentally a lot more secure and many times the virus would always be isolated unless it had like root privileges, which uh, no external attacker should have. Um, but with all that said, let's go ahead and jump over to the desktop and go into terminal and install an antivirus and schedule the antivirus so it runs. Um, what does that look like? What does Linux have for antivirus? Um, and that's where clam AV comes in. So let's go ahead and launch our terminal. With terminal launched, we just do sudo apt install clam AV and clam TK. Both these clam AV is what I use on a lot of servers that I'd install antivirus on. It's a command line only interface though. So you'd only be able to send commands to it. That's where clam TK comes in. For a home user, this is perfect because it's so easy to actually install and configure it using ClamTK. So with that installed, we just simply launch ClamTK and it launches into this very minimal user interface. I'm gonna go ahead and stop through all these. You can choose other options, typically just leave it as is. You can whitelist certain directories and say, hey, don't scan these directories. You can uh, choose proxy if you're on a proxy server. Scheduler, this is where you would need to actually schedule your task. So I've already scheduled it already for I think midnight or 3 a.m., something in that neighborhood. But with that, you can just say, hey, I wanna schedule it for 4 a.m. and then hit the plus sign. Right now, it, I already did this, but let's go ahead and hit minus, put 4 a.m and then it schedules it for 4 a.m. every night. For antivirus signatures, it defaults to midnight to download the new one and be done. So by all means, definitely do this. Um, there's no reason not to do it. So once this is scheduled, you can go ahead and have your normal update the antivirus, scan for any new viruses. And like I said, Clam AV is used on a lot of servers, so it's probably one of the best ones out there, especially for detection rates and definitions. 
it'll be able to find this virus if you did get infected. It has history and quarantine. Should you find any viruses, it'll quarantine those viruses and display history for you. Update, you can click to update your antivirus. It'll show you how many antivirus signatures you have. As you see, I have the 25,000 loaded here. Um, update assistant, um, you can go ahead and say, hey, I would like to automatically receive them, which I'd recommend just leaving that on. Or if you'd like to stipulate how you'd like to receive them or manually install them, you can change that. And then down here, this is where you can manually run your scans if you're not comfortable running uh, one from there. Um, just go in here and you can say scan this directory and pick it and then easily run through a scan. And that's pretty much it. One last thing I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go ahead and drop back to the terminal and I'm gonna show you how it schedules it. It schedules it using cron, so you, you, when you're in there, a cron tab listing should show you what you have. So let's go ahead and pull up the cron tab just so we can see what it's doing. So if we go cron tab dash L for listing, you'll see that it added this listing. Um, it's scheduled to actually go off at midnight even though 4 a.m. was put in that uh, GUI. So the GUI might just be putting everything at midnight. If you don't want midnight, we just go into and do cron tab dash E. Instead of midnight, let's go ahead and put 4 a.m right there and write that out. Now, if we do a cron tab listing, you'll see that it's set for 4 a.m. instead of midnight. So you can, you can manually change this and this is how uh, Clam TK works. It's just a front end to basically schedule Clam Scan or Clam AV really to run. Now, in a business environment, I wouldn't use Clam TK. You just go directly command line and, and cron tab any scheduled scans much like clam tk does for you so by no means that you're limited to this this just kind of shows you what it's doing you don't have to use the, the graphic interface if you don't want to you can always use just clam av or clam scan and manually run these directly from command line or if you wanted to do like a huge complete scan as root you could do a pseudo Clam AV or Clam Scan and ran, run it that way as well if you wanted to scan your entire system um, from root onward. However, in most instances, viruses will be trapped in your home directory because your home user shouldn't have pseudo privileges. So there you have it. That was installing an antivirus and running your scans in Linux. I don't typically do this unless it's a file server because I don't engage in these kinds of activities that would open me up to such uh, liability or compromises, or at least I try not to. However, having said that, I still am a little paranoid because as a lifelong Windows user that switched to Linux, I still have that itch in the back of my head that says, hey, I have to run an antivirus scan at least once a month. So I still do that just to make sure my system's completely clear. Uh, it just gives me that warm and fuzzy feeling inside. But uh, you make the decision. I just wanted to give you the tools to do that. And having said that, a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, this video wouldn't be able to be made. And I'll see you in the next one.